Hey guys, Spencer with Mark 7. I want to go over how to change over your priming system from small to large or vice versa. Um, we got to this point in a previous video. Feel free to watch that or refer to how to tear down your press using your Mark 7 music manual. So first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to remove our primer disc. Once again, I like to use a little magnet to simply lift the primer disc off. It's going to be a little difficult to get something other than we do not recommend prying it up. All Apex 10 presses ship with the alternate priming parts than the press you ordered. So let's say you ordered a nine millimeter press, you're going to get all the large priming components. If you order a 45 ACP press, you're going to get all the small priming components. Next up, you're going to want to do is remove three bolts. You're going to want to remove this top primer housing bolt, bottom primer housing bolt, as well as this linkage arm bolt. I would suggest removing the linkage arm bolt first using a one inch Allen key. Move the shoulder bolt. And be careful not to lose the washer that is on it. Set it aside. And the bottom. One thing to note. The bottom bolt here is shorter than the longer bolt. Make sure they go back in that order or you can cause damage to the press. Next, all I'm going to do is simply lift up, set the primer inside. Now to swap the primer punch, all I'm going to do is remove the primer punch, remove the spring, set the punch aside, apply a little grease to the bottom of the primer punch here, slide the spring back on, and back into the bowl. That's all that's required. Next, what we're going to want to do is remove this piece to swap out our bushing. Now I'm just using a, a tool we have here, but using a, a large hollow ground flathead screwdriver, you're going to want to remove this bushing. Set it aside. So now what you're going to want to do is you're going to take your small prime components, put them aside so you don't lose them. Next we're going to take our large primer bushing and it's engraved large because we're swapping from large to small in this situation and screw it into the housing. Run it down mostly by hand and simply take your screwdriver um, and lock it down. One thing to notice is you want to make sure that the bushing ends up below the primer surface housing here. Um, it shouldn't take much effort. It should be snug, but not super tight. You want to be able to get that out the next time. If you have any issue that this is above, stop and call Mark 7 customer service, but this should not be an issue. I'm just going to simply lightly install this. We're going to set this later with the primer disc. Now we're going to come over. We're going to line up the primer bushing onto the primer punch itself. Drop down, you should feel absolutely no resistance. It should drop right on. And we're going to reinstall the hardware in the reverse order that it's pulled off. I'm just gonna lightly start this in a couple times. You obviously don't wanna tighten both sides all the way at first. Snug up both sides and then fully tighten. These should be pretty tight. You don't want your primer housing coming loose. So now, what I'm going to take that shoulder screw that we took off before for the link arm, make sure that the washer is on it, and come over here onto the bottom and simply reinstall onto the primer linker. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my large primer disc. Once again, I'm going to use a magnet just to make things a little easier. To line things up, I like to use the primer pin alignment hole. It just kind of lets me know where I am at all times. I'm going to come in, put my 
shoulder screw down. Tighten my disc. One thing to note as well, you're gonna look at the top for your primer resting height. Um, you can do this before or after the disc goes on. You're just gonna to wanna to make sure that that punch is still below or slightly below or flush with the bushing. I noticed this when I put it on, everything lined up fine. But if I needed to raise or lower that resting height, once again, I would loosen the screw and move the wedge to subsequently raise or lower the punch. Now we're gonna come in here and we are going to adjust our primer stop plate. Just like we mentioned before, we want to make sure that we touch this radially against the primer disc. We wanna make sure it's not, it has a lot of adjustment in it. We don't want it point contact one way or another. So I like to use the ball end of an Allen key and make sure that this gap is nice and even front to back and that I am not touching. I'm gonna come, I'm going to sum this up. Once again, it is very important to get this, prime, this, this stop plate as close to the disc as you can. This is what aligns the primer over the punch. And we wanna make sure that that primer is delivered every time right on the center of the punch. What I'm gonna do just to kind of check my work a little bit, I'm going to raise this the handle up so I can actuate the compliance mechanism. And I'm pushing this very lightly. Everything is nice and smooth. And I could physically feel that primer disc hitting both stops. So right now it's resting against this stop. As I push, I feel a positive against that stop. I have no binding, everything is nice and free. Okay guys, that's uh, everything you need to do to swap over your private components from large to small or vice versa. Um, and like I also said before, every part that I used to do the swap over was included with Apex 10. There's no extra parts to buy. If you have any other questions, please call us 1-800-4MARK-7 or email us at support at markvii-loading.com. Thank you guys, catch you next time.